Welcome back to my channel. I'm really excited this time because I got my proof copy of a board game I've been working on for years. And um, so I want to do my first unboxing video with it. Um, I have to admit, I did already look at the game when I showed it to my family earlier, but I haven't opened the box yet. And I haven't seen my other game that's in here, which I've actually been selling for several years, but I finally bought myself a copy of the newest version. So first, there is, not, sorry, my take on the classic game, sorry, which I always saw as having a lot of problems. So, I um, made my own version. I'm going to open that in just a minute, because that's the main star, the star attraction here, but I also want to show you, this part may only be of interest to other game designers, but... This lets me draw all the various shapes of things that the game crafter makes, which is going to make designing games in the future a lot easier. Obviously, I haven't used it yet. Um, I'll do a, I'll likely do a review on it once I actually use it. And then finally is cribbage dice. And uh, unfortunately, yeah, this box is a bit useless. I hadn't realized it. I had a complaint about this from a customer, and um, this will prompt me to buy a copy of my own. And yes, yeah, so I got to figure out something else. Problem is, the Game Crafter doesn't really have anything suitable for a box for this game, and the actual D12 dice they sell are just useless. But um, oh, nice, yeah, I'm really pleased with it. Otherwise, yeah, this is great. Uh, you just, the problem is you need um, 5d12 to actually play the game, and theirs are mathematically very weird, so I can't sell them. But, uh, yeah. That's very... I'm really happy with that. i got to figure out the... Selling it this way, just because of the way a game crafter works, is $10, which is kind of a lot. But, um... I'll see what I can come up with as far as a better, better package for that. Okay. And here is the main event. And rather unlike me to not have a knife ready when I want to open something. I am so excited. I have never ordered a prototype of this version. I've only done print and play before now. So this is the very first time I am seeing any of my game components. So here we go. I do like this box. Nice and durable. Eh, more packing material. These were the things I was most unsure of because they are brand new. I originally designed the game for some different pieces, but they were the only stackable pieces they had. These are something new that they actually 3D print, so they've got a, got a nice texture to them. Um, gotta figure out best place to orient this so you can see it. There you go. They're like little traffic cones in six different colors because the game could support up to six players. Interestingly enough, just by sheer coincidence, I assume, the Game Crafter's color options for all of these 3D printed pieces are the colors of the Pride flag plus black and white. <laughs> so this is sort of a Pride edition of the game, but just coincidentally. Okay. Oh, I slightly messed up the alignment on that bit of thing, which I will tweak before I actually put this up for sale. Otherwise, that came out really nice. I like it. I like it a lot. I can also replace the where I simply wrote not sorry on this. I can replace with the actual logo from the box because I made a smaller version of it. But I just did that a couple hours ago. Okay. Here are the real stars of the game. These are what I spent the most time working on. I'm also going to do a how to play video. But for now, this is... These are the boards. And as you can see on the front, I've got the blue one kind of spinning. Because that's really the, the key part of the game. Is you start out with... Your boards touching 
corner to corner. And depending on what cards you play, you can end up rotating the boards, which determine how you can get your pieces from your start to your goal. It's actually quite a lot of fun. So far, everybody who's played it has enjoyed it. Uh, and uh, because, again, Game Crafters options have some uh, color blindness issues with the colors, the back of every board is blank, so you can color it whatever color works best for you as uh, if you happen to have color blindness or if you're just an artist and you want to make custom ones of the, the same colors. And when you buy the physical copy of the game, it includes the print and play, which has some uh, homemade pieces in it, including some white ones that you can color however you want. So, uh, yeah, there's just no reason why color blindness should keep you from being able to play this game. And finally, the very last piece of the puzzle is, of course, the deck of cards. This is actually brand new. They used to send cards in little Ziploc bags, which then, of course, led to single-use plastic problems. So now they're just in paper. And if I remember correctly, they actually are not specifically recycled paper. And this itself is recyclable. So, And there we go. The... Cards to make, to, to play, not sorry. Now, I'm not sure, I'm sorry, I'll get the knack of this webcam thing eventually. I'm not sure, uh, there we go. Um, I'm happy with that. So I think I'm going to tweak the design of the backs of the cards as well as fix those two things on the rule book, um, then I will update the print and play version with the the new uh, stuff. Because right now the the print and play version is still for the game's old name, which was Trozy Dash, which is a made up Welsh word that would mean spinning race. But it was kind of hard to fit onto a box this small. And I, with the sorry, not sorry phrase going around, it just seemed like a really great name for a game that's not sorry. <laughs> anyway, um, thanks for watching, and I will see you next time.